Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today for Halloween I'm playing Blue Black Rats as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Now you might be more used to seeing red as opposed to blue as the secondary color for a rat deck, but let's be honest, blue is a lot scarier than red and it also gives us access to Silver Fur Master which will pump up all our ninjas and rogues and a lot of our rats are ninjas or rogues since they're remnants from Kamigawa and it also discounts our ninjutsu abilities as a ninjutsu itself. And we can also potentially pick up some of our rats that have a nice enter the battlefield ability, such as our Nezumi Informant, which will make the opponent discard a card when it enters, so we can potentially ninjutsu, pick it up, and then replay it to make them discard once again. There is Nezumi Prowler at 2 mana as well, Ninjutsu for 1 on a black, so we can discount it down to just a single black mana, and then when it enters can give one of our creatures Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn. So that can be a nice way to set up an ambush if the opponent tries to block one of our 1-1 one, one rat tokens that we might get from Tangled Colony or Lord Skitter. Then and now we can potentially give that rat token Death Touch and Life Link with a Prowler and take out a larger blocker. Then there's a Tangled Colony, a 3-2 that cannot block. When it dies, it generates X 1-1 one, one rat tokens that cannot block, where X is the amount of damage dealt to it this turn. So good to attack into larger creatures still to push through damage. And if the opponent has a Sweeper that deals damage, we might also be left with a bunch of rat tokens. And then we already mentioned our Silver Master. We've got four copies of the Reckoner Raid at one mana as well. Doesn't count as an actual rat creature until it transforms, so we won't be able to find it with Karamonix, which is one of the main payoffs for the rat deck, but it still gives us a nice one mana play for an aggressive creature deck. And then it's also a rogue that gets pumped by a Silver Fur Master, and as a creature with menace it's a nice enabler for ninjutsu, so we can pick it back up, put one of our ninjutsu creatures in play, and then redeploy the saga to start draining the opponent once again. Then we also have some cheap removal with Cutdown to try and clear a path, get rid of some of the aggressive creatures from Monorad Aggro, for instance. And then at 3 mana we get to some of the real payoffs, Lord Skitter making a 1-1 one, one rat token every turn, and can also clean up the opponent's graveyard nicely. And then Karamonix, probably the best payoff for a rat deck in standard, a 3-3 three, three with Toxic 1, saying other rats we control have Toxic 1, not very likely to win with Poison, but I guess it could come up. And then when Karamonix enters the battlefield we get to look at the top 5 cards of our library and reveal any number of rat cards from among them and put them into our hand. So this can generate a lot of card advantage, giving the deck more staying power than other creature strategies when facing removal heavy decks and we've got a total of 26 rats in the deck so we've got a pretty good hit rate with Karamonix often finding two or more rats and then we've got two copies of Nashi, which is a lot of fun, especially if we get a discount from our master, making it easier to ninjutsu, and that's the most reliable way to hit the opponent with Nashi, so we can enable its ability, where we exile the top card of each player's library, until end of turn we may play one of those cards, and then pay life equal to its mana value, rather than paying its mana cost, so that can also set up some very explosive starts if we exile an expensive card with it. And then we've got three copies of the Twisted Sewer Witch as a nice curve topper. Now it doesn't count as a rat, so we won't be able to find it with Karamonix, but it's still an awesome curve topper. As it enters we get to make one of those rat tokens, and then put a Wicked Roll token on each rat we control. So that means they get plus one plus one, and when the Wicked Roll token goes to the graveyard, the opponent also loses one life. So that can be a great way to close out the game, especially if we've got a nice wide board, thanks to Lord Skitter making rat tokens repeatedly. And then our mana base, just a lot of blue-black dual lands. Now if you're on a budget you could potentially replace some of the blue-black dual lands or maybe some of the islands with Secluded Courtyard, naming Rat, which is still good enough to play Master or Ninjutsu it, since it also pays for abilities. But of course if you're playing a sideboard with additional blue cards, then a Courtyard may not be the best fit for the mana base. But in best of one you could easily go without some of the other dual lands and go with Courtyard instead. And then we also have the channel lands, which of course we do need blue mana to channel Soaring City, so that's one of the downsides of potentially having a secluded courtyard in the mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's not that great without a third land. If we find one, it's decent. I'll try it. We're not in a hurry to refuel, so I might go with Lord Skitter first. Okay. 
So we've got to play this before attacking. And then next turn, either double spell Raid and Prowler or get Karamonix down. Opponent on what looks like a multicolor ramp deck might just be band colors. So for now we can keep attacking. Could also ninjutsu the Prowler, but at this point maybe double Prowler is the way to go. If we want to play around a sweeper a bit better, I guess Reckoner Raid plus 3 drop could also be decent. Alright, find plenty of rats. Could have also picked up Lord Skitter with uh, Ninjutsu potentially to avoid it getting swept up. But it's just going to be an invasion of Zendikar. No Sunfall. And yeah, our opponent looks to be in a bit of trouble here on the way back. I guess Stomper does have Vigilance and they get to transform the invasion here. Unless we want to chump. But then we wouldn't quite have enough next turn. I guess if I double ninjutsu, this is a rogue or a ninja. Yeah, you know what, let's try this. Attack all out. And then try and put some ninjas into play here. Opponent's gonna probably block Lord Skitter. That goes for the Prowler. So by using another ninjutsu here, we can give this one Death Touch. So let's say we pick up a token. Ninjutsu again. Picking up another token. And then this is already lethal. Don't even have to give lifelink and death touch since we still trade. And there we have it, so Silver Master, a nice way to end the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Facing blue-white. Let's maybe start with the informant. Could also try colony. Which applies a bit more pressure. And that baits out a make disappear. The hope is that informant can maybe make them discard a sweeper as their last card. Run out Lord Skitter on curve since we've got another one, another make disappear. And now we can double spell. Although, Reckon Raid plus Lord Skitter is also an option. Sure. Another make disappear. Okay. Do they have the fourth one? Faithful Mending, draw and discard. Small chance this is a three blind mice combo deck. Opponent ditching a Sunfall. A revelry. Just to draw a card. Okay, now it's probably a good window for informants. And then I'll play Silver for Master. Okay, Ninjutsu for one mana. Opponent passes. This could be a Wandering Emperor as well. And our opponent's most likely going to exile before I get a chance to ninjutsu. So maybe play another master now. Pump up both of my creatures. And attack. And then we'll probably see them exile the first silver fur. I hope you're ready to yep. Now I could still ninjutsu. And then make them discard their last card at least, so could be effective. And 
And yeah, it was a time use, so it does look like the three blind mice combo deck. Which tries to use Tamiyo to exile three blind mice, make a token, and then make an infinite army of mouse tokens, essentially. I'm never done. Now we gotta hope to dodge another sweeper. Ooh, nice sewer witch off the top. That's one of our best draws here. It's a lot of damage coming in. So just gotta dodge a sunfall off the top, pretty much. Gonna be another Wandering Emperor, pretty good. But our opponent still seems very dead here. So yeah, getting to discard an extra card with the Informants ended up mattering. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and is keepable enough. Turn to can start with an informant and then it's good to pick up with ninjutsu can potentially clear a path with cut down put on blue green could be a poison deck storm chaser drake we get to take out here okay and then do we want silver for master or prowler in play um, kind of an interesting decision. Could also just play one of my creatures without using ninjutsu. But it's not bad to be able to replay the informants. And then now I also get a discount on future ninjutsu, so we can potentially put in a Nashi for three mana. We'll see. Another Drake. This time, potentially, with protection available. Okay, so don't think we want to cut down. Could just play Nashi, pass with cut down available. Could also attack and offer the trade and see if they maybe run out of creatures, which is also feasible. And if they go for a trick first, we can punish them. So we'll start there. Opponent takes it. So yeah, we could Ninjutsu the Scion now. Which I don't hate. Hope they don't have a bounce spell. Alright, get to hit them. And nice, we get to play Contaminator here. Don't expect this cut down to successfully take out the Drake. Although I could cut down now and then force him to tap out to protect it, basically. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Don't think we'll have a better window. And maybe if it's a phase out instance, then the bypass will fall off. It is another Tyvar stand. So they get to draw a bunch of cards, but they will be tapped out here for the most part. Now, I don't think we'll be able to pick up the opponent's creature with Ninjutsu. It doesn't say you own. So I'm kind of curious to just pick up the opponent's creature. Uh, and see how that plays out. So we'll attack. Return an unblocked attacking creature you control to its owner's hand. Alright, never mind. Opponent falls to 8. And then just empty out the rest of our hand, I guess. Yeah, the reminder on Ninjutsu doesn't mention owner's hand.
hoping to pick up our informant again. They haven't declared blockers yet, so we can ninjutsu at this stage yet. Alright, now we can. And, uh, I mean, we can just let damage happen since we're attacking for lethal. They have to make the first move. March my two creatures, so yeah, now we can respond. And this will still be lethal. Could also put the Scion back in. So they probably had to march before this uh, stage. So we would not have been able to ninjutsu in response. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. A Reckon Raid into Prowler, Karamonix to refuel. And even have a bit of interaction. Forest into Pack Leader, okay. Still fine playing Prowler for now. Since we have Karamonix, we should be okay just trading resources since we'll be able to refuel. Although Pack Leader also dies to cut down. So I'll take two for now. Canker Bloom could go after our enchantment. But the most mana efficient play here is Karamonix. Don't think the Toxic is gonna matter too much. So I'll give them less information before attacking. And only find Nashi, sadly, so not the best Karamonix. Although a Menace creature is good to set up Ninjutsu. Pack Leader is attacking, so they have a Pump Spell if we block with Karamonix. Might be okay with kind of baiting that out here. Then they're less likely to stop my ninjutsu plan. Even though Cutdown could punish whatever trick they have. And an adaptive, okay. Lord Skitter plus Cutdown is also an option, and then wait on Nashi for another turn. Although this is a pretty decent window for it, and then if we hit big, we could kind of snowball that card advantage. So I'm still gonna give it a try. And what do we hit? A land and tribute, alright, not bad. This will help grow the rat tokens from Lord Skitter as well. Oddity now grows pack leader, so we're on the receiving end of some beatdown. Although Cutdown can take out pack leader at least, and Nashi can hit once again. So we'll start maybe with Lord Skitter to get that down. Could also double cut down now. Okay, master to draw. And uh, let's get rid of a creature. Nashi attacks. Finding pack leader, worth one life. And then just double cut down while they're tapped out, seems safest. Could also, I guess, pass since we can profitably block, block, and then if they go for a pump spell we can punish them. Although the fact that we didn't play Reckon Raid kind of gives away that we have some uh, instant in hand. Okay, Canker Bloom could destroy our enchantment. And then now I would have to cut down the adaptive. So, yeah, could get punished if they have a pump spell here. Right, Canker Bloom proliferates, so I guess it also saves the adaptive. But uh, I guess then it didn't pick up a counter from the ETB effect. So we could just double trade. And then pull ahead with tributes. Don't need to get too greedy. Okay, so hit for 6. Could play this before attacking just to pump Nashi. Make it 7. 
can block an opposing oddity. And then just play a land for now. Okay. Seem to have things under control. Maybe should have started with Colony, and then if we draw Swamp, I don't have to take damage to play my uh, Reckoner Raid. But yeah, put in place Contaminator and explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, we will need to draw a few lands, but we're off to a good start with the Reckoner Raid into Colony. And then we've got Caramonix to refuel, so we're good for a grindier matchup. Colony also gets much better if we get to be the aggressor on the play. Can be a bit of a liability when we're having to play defense. Put in blue-black and there's our third lane. Didn't think we're setting up ninjutsu. Just hit for three, play another colony. So if they have a counter spell, we don't get Karamonix countered. And then next turn I could maybe ninjutsu both Master and Prowler after getting the discount. We'll see. And ninjutsu would play around a counter spell a bit better. It's gonna be a Jace, so we're going to mill deck. It's gonna shrink down colony for now, which is perfect since we can pick it up with ninjutsu. So. Send both a Jace. And then Ninjutsu. And Ninjutsu. Jace down. And we can start from chapter one again. Opponent passes. Alright, probably want to double spell here as opposed to playing a 3-drop. So we'll attack. Four mana. Opponent passes. And then now I could main phase Lord Skitter. And then still Ninjutsu Prowler for one mana, potentially. So Exile Jace. Can't Exile our own Graveyard with Lord Skitter, which might be more relevant to uh, prevent Jace from drawing. But I don't think this game is going to last for much longer. So we are attacking for lethal. They're probably going to use a removal spell before we get a chance to ninjutsu. Air tie so that can take out a creature and block. So yeah, that'll probably keep them alive. Prowler down. So I can ninjutsu Prowler. Don't think that's really necessary. Since we get to trade and make three rats either way. Unless we want Silverfur Master in hand. In case of a sweeper. I guess I can buy that. Bone falls to two. Alright, sweeper or bust. And then we can follow up with Karamonix. Still get the uh, captain, so we would still be in decent shape. A sweeper like Gix's command doesn't quite wipe the board. They can kill one of my three-part creatures. So that was also a good reason to ninjutsu instead of keeping the master on the battlefield. And now we get to untap. And another Airtai is not going to save them anymore. So we can just move to attackers. And that's probably going to be good enough. Alright, looks like our opponent may have disconnected. Let's hack all out, and that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Just need to hit our land drops to get up to 5 for the Sewer Witch. Karamonix will provide the card advantage. Turn to Colony, probably for the initial pressure. Opponent on perhaps a domain strategy. Picking up the informant with Ninjutsu could also be fun. For now, play Lord Skitter, which will apply the most pressure. Opponent can cast a 2-mana Leyline Binding, still missing an island to cast it for 1. And there we go. So we could see a Leyline Binding now. It's going to be a Bramble Familiar, so it's an Invasion of Alara deck instead. And uh, yeah, I don't really have a way to stop it. So, attack all out. If they block my 1-1, one, one, we can take out the Familiar with Prowler. Which is probably worth it to delay an invasion for another turn. But that's all I can do for now. Our hand hasn't really developed the way I wanted to. Picking up a second Sewer Witch. Flash Gorger's next. So... Probably okay to trade for Lord Skitter here. And then go Reckon a Raid plus Colony. The Graveyard Hate from Lord Skitter is certainly relevant in the matchup, but we might find another one with Karmonix. So I could also just play Karmonix here instead of double spelling. Sure. No Lord Skitter yet. Is it invasion time? Looks like it. Nope, just a two mana familiar, which we can now cut down. Okay. Attack, play, probably colony over informant. Opponent has four cards in hand, so discarding one doesn't seem all that relevant. And hope we get there next turn. It's gonna be a Desecrator, can kill a creature, but we should still have enough here. Alright, GG's. So dodge the invasion of Alara, which otherwise could have taken over. Could make them discard two cards now, down to one. And then Sewer Witch could have been the coup de gras on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Tangled Colony into a Lord Skitter. And then we can look into a Ninjutsu, potentially using the rat tokens. Turn one Bond Warden, sir, opponent a plus one counter deck. Okay. I'll hang on to cut down. If a botanical brawler shows up, we might want to take it out before it gets out of hand. But her opponent appears to be red white. Okay, Barrett immediately makes a token, that's pretty nice. So that might also be worth taking out. And then I can still play Prowler, although Prowler doesn't do much in the face of the Soldier. So maybe playing Lord Skitter is still fine. Bunt actually takes a trade, we get two more tokens. Okay. Aaron Apprentice makes sense in a counter's deck, and a back of Baird explains why they took the trade. Alrighty, so could attack all out and then potentially use a death touch to trade for a creature that's blocking a rat token. Assuming one of my creatures goes unblocked.
give this death touch. And then I can ninjutsu again to keep a prowler in the back pocket. And keep Lord Skitter on the battlefield. So we get to trade for both creatures. And still have a prowler we can ninjutsu. And we get to keep cut down for later. Main phase reinforcements, maybe points towards Convoke. Which would be pretty effective here. And Knight Errants finding more creatures. Yep. As long as we have more attackers and the opponent has blockers, we can at least make it difficult for the opponent to set up a block. Although I may not attack with Lord Skitter anymore. Opponent finds Fusling and another Baird. So probably gonna cut down Baird. And then for now... Yeah, if I attack with everyone, Knight Errant blocks Lord Skitter. Which we probably want to avoid. If I just attack with these two, they can prevent Ninjutsu. So I could cut down the Fusling, I suppose. To enable an attack, hit for four, Putin probably takes it. And then I can keep up Sorting City. Opponent goes for the trade. So now it's Lord Skitter versus Baird making tokens. But if our opponent's playing with the uh, Recruiter, their tokens can deal a lot more damage. I reckon a raid down to 10. At least we've got a bit of a life total advantage here. Not really in a position to attack. And yep, there's a recruiter first making tokens so that they can set up an even bigger attack. Well, that's happening. Do we want to bounce Baird? Which next turn they can play alongside the recruiter. Probably better off bouncing a knight token then. And a silver fur master. Yeah, just uh, probably gonna take a beating next turn. There's Recruiter. It's not quite lethal. And uh, can eat one of the two powered creatures. Probably trade for Recruiter, trade for Knight token. The land's not what we wanted. So don't really want to trade Lord Skitter for Baird and a token. And don't really want to attack with my rats just to get in two damage. Could draw the uh, Sewer Witch to pump up our creatures. And reinforcements. Okay, that's fine for now. Can discard their last card. And they had another reinforcements. Okay. Hoping for Karamonix to provide a bit of card advantage here. Or the Witch to pump the team would be nice. Opponent attacks all out. Can be good for me. So we're taking 7, 8, 9. 
and crescendo. Yeah, that's game. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Colony into Lord Skitter, most likely. Trying to set up a ninjutsu'd Nashi. Voidwing hybrids are opponent on a proliferate deck here. So I don't think I necessarily want to trade and make two rats since our opponent can easily get the hybrid back. Just start going wide with tokens. And then next turn I could ninjutsu already. And cut down could also clear a path. Opponent's actually attacking since they want to inflict that first poison. So we could attempt to cut down the hybrids so Lord Skitter can exile it, so it's gone for good. But there's a lot that can go wrong. Pun can kill Lord Skitter before it triggers. They could counter my removal spell. So I think we just attack here and then maybe set up a ninjutsu. Ninjutsu also plays around a counter spell better, since it's an ability and not a spell we're casting. Opponent with Discover the Impossible, so they could still have a removal spell to play afterwards. And yeah, Anoint with Affliction, actually going after Lord Skitter, that makes sense since they want to protect the Voidwing Hybrid, but does mean we get to now connect with Nashi and cast the spell for free. Second hybrid. Informant can make them discard. So now might be a good time to cut down. Maybe connect with Nashi once again. And I'll let damage happen. Find a discover the impossible or land. Land would set up Sewer Witch for next turn, so I kind of like that. Probably keep Prowler in hand in case of a Sweeper. Prologue puts us to 3 poison, so Corrupted has been enabled. I guess the Sweeper would probably be a Gixus command, so a 3 powered creature is still good to go. And I guess double spot removal spell would authorize keep them alive, but nope, the rats prevail. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Master into Karamonix to find more rats. Already have four mana to set up our sewer witch. And let's see here, go for tapped marsh. But shouldn't matter too much. I guess playing shores on one in case we draw a couple more Dark Slick shores off the top makes sense. Master actually allows us to set up a turn 3 Nashi with Ninjutsu, thanks to the discount, although not counting on it. The virus Beetle makes me discard. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of tough since we want to keep the lands for the Sewer Witch, but if I discard a land, I'm less likely to get to it. Might still be a land anyway. And then I can attack, see if they let me Ninjutsu. Seems worthwhile. And then Duress versus Cutdown. I have to imagine Duress is going to be more important, even though Cutdown potentially clears a path for Nashi to hit again next turn. And yep, Wandering Emperor, No Way Out makes me discard too, Informant another discard. So opponent's playing a discard deck, that much is clear. So how much do we care about Wandering Emperor? It's not bad, but honestly the No Way Out might be more annoying, making me discard two cards here. Could, of course, keep Karamonix, which is good against discard effects. Now, might get rid of a land again, or I have to just give up on the Sewer Witch. Because if I play Silver for Master, Nashi is big enough to attack, but then next turn they can exile it. So it might be better off just playing Karamonix, and then if they want to double block Nashi to trade, that's fine. 
Sure. And then keep the Sewer Witch to go with all the ranks we'll find. This is a very aggressive attack, since if we had another removal spell, we could connect with Nashi. I guess we're okay with the opponent jumping here. And then hope for a good hit. So we're, uh... Okay, opponent just lets it happen. A land versus Reckoner Raid. Let's go with the Reckoner Raid, I think. Play Carmonix. And so yeah, that's not a bad hit. So Wandering Emperor could answer Nashi. But we've got a few more things we can do with our mana. Now I don't even have to attack to play around the minus two. Just go Lord Skitter plus Colony. And then hope they don't have a sweeper, I guess. Could just attack with Karamonic since we have a replacement. Looks like removal for Lord Skitter. Go for the throat. All right, now Nashi trading for two one ones is not the worst. Although we will be able to pump it with the Sewer Witch. I think it's just Karamonix attacking. Play Colony. And I'm not in a hurry to play the Witch. Can play another Lord Skitter first. Informant to make the opponent discards also nice. So we'll start with Lord Skitter. And then go to attackers. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Would probably just attack with Karamonix here. Fine if they want to exile it. And then still have an informant second main. And then next turn might be a good window for the Sewer Witch to pump up our entire team and close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We'll need a third land, but for now, turn one cut down, turn two prowler. Cut down also gets a bit better on the draw. And a collector's vault. Uh oh, a reanimator deck. Well, at least Lord Skitter gives us a bit of graveyard hate, so that helps. But with vault, if they time it carefully, they can potentially play around it. Circle of Confinement exiles Prowler, so no ninjutsu. Although we'd still have to wait a turn anyways. Yeah, I guess we go for Nashi, just for three mana here. Make them answer it. If not, we could potentially cast some expensive cards from the opponent's library. Main phase Vault activation. Could play into our Lord Skitter. Just discarding another Circle of Confinement, which could not go after Nashi. And now a Virtue of Courage to take it out. Alright, it's too bad. Still gonna go for Lord Skitter now. And the jig is up, our opponent knows not to use Vault until they can actually reanimate right away. Touch the Spirit Realm, more removal. So possible they're not really reanimating, just using Vault for value. Okay, get to play Karamonix. And then just play a Tangled Colony, probably. If it dies to a damage-based sweeper, it can leave behind rat tokens. And then we've got double Karamonix in hand, so we're not going to run out of creatures anytime soon. The rats do be relentless. Vault activates. And it took Asia's welcome discarded. So they must have some creatures in their deck. Witch King could be worth it. Could also wait another turn. Although it's not like I have much else to do here. So sure. Play the Sewer Witch. And smash. This is a pretty healthy attack. Virtue of Loyalty just trades for a rat. 
Jump Scaramonix. Okay, gotta hope that their sweeper, if they have one, deals damage as opposed to just exiling creatures or destroying them. It's gonna be another circle going after Colony. Drains with a Wicked Roll. And the Circuit Mender, which we can cut down. Okay, not too bad here. Probably still more likely to win with damage as opposed to poison. Don't have any ninjas or rogues in play. So we'll just let damage happen. And yeah, our opponent explodes. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, put our opponent to 4, Reckon Array to 3. And then a 3 Wicked Rolls will drain the opponent to death unless they can gain life first. Alright, so we get to see our rats in action, and I'm quite pleased with how the deck turned out. Adding blue over red as our secondary color may not be intuitive, with red-black rats being a main archetype in Wilds of Eldrain Limited, but I think Silver for Master and the other ninjas add enough to the deck that it's worth it. Also means we have more creatures with a rat creature type, so we've got a bigger hit rate with Karamonix, which is also pretty important, and there's even some fun shenanigans you can pull off with ninjutsu, even picking up Karamonix so you can replay it and find even more more rats, that's kind of the dream for this deck. So yeah, overall pretty good deck, not going to be one of the main contenders for the ranked ladder, still probably too slow to compete with a good draw from Monorad Aggro, and some of the control and domain strategies can go over the top, but against other mid-range creature decks we can sometimes outgrind them with a card advantage from Karamonix and some of the other rat synergies. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.